Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to bond sugar gliders with each other. Sugar gliders that have never met before. Now, the number one rule when it comes to owning sugar gliders is that you have to have at least two two or more. So if you only have one sugar glider, what do you do now? How do you introduce a friend to them? So that is what we're going to be covering in today's video. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can get more sugar glider videos. And also don't forget to check the description down below for a full playlist of all the sugar glider videos that I do on this channel. Before we get started with today's video, I want to go ahead and thank Spoiled Creatures for sending me some really awesome sugar glider products. She makes handmade sugar glider snuggie bags and toys, and I've really been loving her products, so be sure to check her out. She has an Etsy shop and also follow her on Instagram. She has some really good stuff and just beautiful material. Check the link in the description for sugar glider videos. By now you should watch those. Sugar gliders are very exotic pets with special needs, so you should not take the decision to get them as pets lightly. And also, one other thing I wanted to mention before we get started is be sure to check the description for a coupon code for Exotic Nutrition where you can get 10% off your entire order. It's a great place to shop for sugar gliders. So let's say that you have one sugar glider and you recently found out that you're supposed to have two, or you had two and one passed away. What do you do now? Now, one of the most important things that you want to know is what the gender of your sugar glider is. Now, a few months ago, I was helping someone who had gotten a sugar glider from a pet store, locally actually, and there were just a whole list of things that were wrong with what he was doing with his sugar glider that he just was completely unaware of. But I think one of the biggest issues was that the pet store couldn't even tell him what the gender of his sugar glider was. So besides all of the bad care advice that they had given them, he didn't even know if he had purchased a male or a female. So it's super important to know whether you have a male or a female sugar glider because that's going to be very important in deciding how to get the next sugar glider uh, mate for the sugar glider that you already have. So if you have a female sugar glider, then you can get another companion that is a female. If you have a male sugar glider, first you will need to get him neutered and then you will be able to get him a female companion or a male companion in some cases. Now, male companions, males with males can work, but it is a little bit more tricky, so I do recommend doing a male and a female, that's typically going to be a little bit easier for most owners. Because it can also depend on the age of the sugar glider, uh, just things like that. So if you're not super sure how old your sugar glider is and you're barely getting them neutered, then maybe you want to stick with a female companion. It is super important to make sure that your sugar glider is neutered. If you're not an experienced breeder with the lineage rights to your sugar glider, then it is a very irresponsible thing to be breeding them. Without having all of this background information on the sugar glider that comes with lineage breeding, there is a very, very high chance that the sugar gliders that you have, the babies, will have health problems. And these can be right away or they can develop later in life where they actually die from them quite young. And of course, neutering the male is gonna make having a companion for him a lot easier. So then once you have your male neutered or you have a female, then you can start looking for another sugar glider to buy. And I actually did a whole video about how to buy a sugar glider going through breeders, rescues, um, pet stores, all the information that you need to know. So I'm not really gonna go into that here in this video because I have a video that's step by step um, and the information about what's cost effective and things like that. So please check that out down below in that playlist that I mentioned. When your new sugar glider arrives, you will need to already have another cage set up. So this is gonna be a separate sugar glider cage with all of the stuff that they need. First thing you will need to do is quarantine. Now, some people do skip this step if they take the animal to a vet, but that's a whole nother thing to get into. Really depends on the person, um, on the animal, um, what you feel is best. But quarantine should be done in a separate room away from all your other animals. And then after a period of time, when you know that the animal is healthy, then you can move that cage into the same room with your other pets. Now what you want to do next is you want to take the cage and place it close to your sugar glider cage, the sugar glider that you already have, and you want the cages to be close enough where they can see each other 
and get used to each other being there, but not close enough that it's actually touching. Even a, you know, a little bit further away, because if a tail comes out of the bars, you don't want the other sugar glider to be able to reach out and grab the tail or something like that. So a little bit of distance, but close enough that they can kind of see each other and interact. What I'll do is I'll leave the cages like this for about a week, watch the animals, see how they interact. Each animal is different, but in my experience, sugar gliders are extremely friendly and so usually there's no aggression, but this gives them a chance to get used to each other and they need to get that chance to be able to like see them, but not have to have them in their space immediately. Now, after a few days of that going on and you're observing the animals and seeing that they're getting used to seeing each other there, they're not surprised by it when they wake up anymore and they're not showing any aggression, then you move the cages closer together. So at this point, they'd actually be touching each other where they can have some physical interaction with each other, but it is limited because of the bars and everything, and then also because the animals can get away from each other. So they don't have to actually be right up against each other. They can go back to their own space. Then I'll leave it like this for about another week. Now, once this has happened and I watch the sugar gliders interacting with each other and there's no aggression and they're getting really used to seeing each other there and being close to each other, I will try to do introductions where they are actually in the same cage or same space. To try to make this go as smoothly as possible, I will try to add distractions for them. So like new toys maybe, putting treats and forging toys. I'll also make sure that there's plenty of food, more food than they'll actually be able to eat so that they don't feel like they need to compete for food and also make sure that there's plenty of snuggle bags. I always make sure to provide one snuggle bag per sugar glider even though they do sleep together most of the time. Now I like to place the sugar gliders together before they wake up for the night. So I will take the new sugar glider sleeping pouch and place it inside the main cage. Make sure you're going to be able to spend a lot of time watching them when you do this. The sugar gliders will wake up and start to come out to eat. They may take some time to realize there is actually someone new in their cage, or they might quickly see each other. Sugar gliders are very affectionate and have no idea what personal space is, so don't be freaked out if they start getting very close right away. When Bindi met Romeo, she crabbed his face and shoved her nose into his fur, smelling him all over. The sugar gliders are pretty intense animals, so it shouldn't be too difficult to distinguish positive behavior from negative, aggressive behavior. You don't want any biting or fighting to happen. In that case, you do need to separate and start over. A sign that you can look for is that the new sugar glider is able to go into the sleeping bag of the first sugar glider. If they go in together and there's no fighting, you know that they are happy and have bonded. Another option is to actually open the doors to both cages and let the sugar gliders come out and interact with each other, of course following all the same steps that I just previously mentioned. Personally though, I don't really recommend this option for two reasons. One, when I get a new sugar glider, I want to bond them to my other sugar gliders before I bond with them. And so I don't want a sugar glider that is not bonded to me, not familiar with me to be running around the room and me having to chase them. That's just um, it's kind of a disaster. And then secondly, the other reason is, is that I feel that the cage is a more controlled environment, so if something goes wrong, it's gonna be easier to get in there and fix the problem, whereas if something goes wrong in the room, um, bigger environment, then you know it's just kind of all over the place. So that's why I say stick to the cage for the first time introducing them. If you're patient and go through these steps and really let your pets have time to adjust to everything, then there shouldn't be a problem because sugar gliders really are very affectionate animals. They are super social and love living together in groups. I have two females and two males all living together in the same cage. One female is eight years old and two are about a year and a half old and my new sugar glider is six months old. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. My name is Megan. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn more about sugar gliders. Be sure to check out Spoil Creatures and all the sugar glider products that they have. Link for all that will be in the description of the video and don't forget to use that 10% off coupon code for exact nutrition. And you guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you guys next time.